Hi everyone, I'm Marty Levinson and welcome to Northtown Neighborhood News Magazine. Hi, I'm Marty Levinson. Welcome to Northtown News Magazine. In closing, I want to say, hi, I'm Marty Levinson. Welcome to the Northtown News Magazine. Thank you very much. Come on, baby, don't you want to go? Come on, baby, don't you want to go? Back to that lemon light city. Sweet home Chicago Two two is four 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 six Come on baby now get your business face Come on Honey don't you wanna go Back to the lemon last Hi, I'm Marty Levins and welcome to the North Carolina News Magazine show with the greatest camera around Sonny Hirsch and your host Javi Myers Thank you, Marty. Abby Myers, Northtown Neighborhood News Magazine, a presentation of Sonny Hirsch and myself. Set us up on the web at www.ntnm.org, uh, communitypolicingcaps24.org, and uh, political season is over. Uh, we want to talk to as many interesting people. One of the nice things about this time of year is we get a backload of really interesting people we haven't had on the show for some time. Somebody who, like a lot of you, are really big fans of, um, you know, who uh, I think the world of is a judge who recently was um, moved out of the criminal justice system into the uh, more private sector so we can talk about certain things, is uh, from Evanston, the highly rated Judge Larry Axelrude. How are you? Javi, it's always a pleasure to be here. My pleasure. Um, so, you know, you've got a whole bunch of stuff going on in the city right now. you got a you know, you got a state's attorney who's obviously, like, not going to be, uh, you know, who, who's going to be out after a few months. Sorry, Anita. Like you, but whatever. Um, you know, you've got somebody new coming in. Um, you've got a president of the county board that likes to get overly involved in things. Um, and without getting too political, how do you see things? What, what, what's going on over here? Well, first of all, it's nice to transition to the civil world from the criminal milieu. And uh, now I can look at it uh, from a distance instead of being in the midst of it. Um, I'm concerned about a lot of different things. Um, one of the things uh, I'm hopeful is that um, with the new administration, um, I thought Kim Fox gave a nice uh, speech upon her victory and vowed to be independent. I think the president of the county board feels that all of the um, branches work for her, um, you know, the sheriff and the state's attorney and, and county commissioners, and I, and I hope that there will be a strong separation of powers going forward. I hope so, too. As a matter of fact, uh, you know, I asked Anita Alvarez about the story that Cody Preckwickle actually came to her first staff meeting after she was elected and started trying to take over and run things. And she told me with, like, this amazed look on her face, yeah, she really did do that. I've heard that. That story's gone around the legal community and it's quite legend. Um, you know, being elected to the Cook County Board doesn't mean if you have no medical background that you know how a hospital runs and we're, we're running a hospital, criminal justice system. Um, there's things that are going on that have me really concerned. Um, as you know, I don't know if your viewers know, but uh, for four or five years I ran two alternative courtrooms, which were uh, the veterans courtroom and the mental health courtroom. And the veterans courtroom uh, is a different uh, animal altogether because you're dealing with a, uh, a universe where the individuals that are there at one time in their life were functioning at a very high level and they've sort of like a train that's been derailed but hasn't crashed. And we use, in partnership with the Veterans Administration, all the facilities uh, and resources of the Veterans Administration and the federal government. So not only does it not cost any money to the county or the state, but we have virtually unlimited cooperation and, and virtually unlimited resources. And so we're at that point, we're trying to get them back on track, and we've had tremendous success. Alternatively, in the mental health court, we're dealing with people that have chronic, long-term, sometimes lifelong mental health problems. And we're trying to create alternatives to incarceration, trying to get them stable, trying to get them uh, into a, a better environment. And while I was doing it, uh, this was before Governor Rauner took over, and we would have moments where we, uh, we would have a crisis of continuity of treatment, 
where I'd get a call and somebody, uh, a social worker would say, Susan's uh, at a, a place and they've lost their funding on Friday. I'm going to pick her up Thursday night and try to get her in to something else. Um, since Governor Rauner's come in, um, what you've seen is a complete shutdown of funding for these services and there's no budget and um, there's a, a crisis. His stated goal was to cut the prison, prison population in Illinois by 25 percent, yet for all intents and purposes there's no funding for mental health. Now those are as diametrically opposed as you can possibly get because as Tom Dart reminds us, mentally ill people end up in the jail at an alarming rate because That's there's right. no alternative. So if you cut the funding uh, to all these social programs um, and, uh, and you're trying to cut uh, the population of the jail and the penitentiaries, you can't do both. You have to make a commitment to treatment uh, or you're going to have, by default, a commitment to incarceration. So I'm concerned about that. Yeah, no, that's serious stuff. And yeah, right now there's so many things at a standstill, it's not even funny in the state. But, uh, uh, well, I mean, my, right now I'm, my attitude is a pox on all their houses. <laughs> well, their houses are next to our houses. So I, I think we need to do better than, than, than just curse them. Yeah, uh, actually, I do have a group home next door. <laughs> well, they're probably complaining about you and the neighbors. So Probably, yeah. Um, but I, You I, know, the funny thing is I, I don't really have trouble. It's eight ladies who had Down syndrome, middle-aged. I don't have a problem with them. Sometimes the workers are a little loud. <laughs> well, I, I, I really praise the people that work with, uh, in, in the mental health world, these uh, there's a lot of people that are putting in time and, and have a commitment well beyond anything I've ever seen before. I, I had some social workers that would pick people up in their own car, on their own time, after hours, not being compensated, but doing it because of the level of commitment. And I just, I, I find it reprehensible that uh, we go, continue to go without a budget, and the stalemate is, I don't see any let up in that, and I'm, I'm afraid that we're going to actually see people truly, literally die from this uh, lack of treatment, lack of commitment. If you haven't already, well, I, 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 I think you're right, but um, we should do better as, as, a, as a state, and we need to do better, especially in Cook County. No, I, I definitely agree with that. Um, what about... Uh, how, um, the, the police, how do the police react to the kind of thing that's going on in the criminal justice system these days? You know, it, 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 it may seem impolitic to say this, but I find that the police officers from when I started uh, in the criminal justice system in 1984, the training that the police officers get, the compassion, the uh, ability for them to handle these uh, people in crisis is, is just exponentially better than it was. Without question, there have been some uh, moments where police officers are acting in a way that's disgraceful. But I if you look at the events in the city of Chicago, for example, and you have, I think it's 11,000, 12,000, maybe 13,000 uh, 12 sworn. 13,000 police officers. And, and you're looking at a handful of, of episodes, and I'm not an apologist, but you have to look at this in, in some sort of context. And in, in all of the most horrific incidents here in Chicago and nationwide, uh, they're an aberration, and uh, I think that there's an ebb and flow, but in, in communities that um, violence is, is rampant, um, the police officers um, are the only force that are able to try and, and, and bring some sort of safety and security to neighborhoods, and I think there has to be better communications and a better commitment. I'm hopeful that um, over this last election there can be a bit of a clean start and, and, and a fresh break. I, I'm encouraged by uh, Mayor Emanuel's choice for um, uh, uh, Chief of Police and I'm hopeful that that helps uh, rebuild an esprit de corps in the police department. And, uh, and I hope that, so because I, I know that the policemen in general like one of their own. Well I, I think it's a comfort level. They want someone who understands what they're going through and you know when you look at it and you look at all the things that you know it's great when you see a video of a couple of guys uh, in uniform playing catch with the football or playing basketball with a kid because those are the things that you see so rarely but happens daily. Um, we live in an environment where 
If you think about this for a moment, when I was in the state's attorney's office in felony review, we'd have over 900 murders a year. And I think last year there was a 474 murders. Yeah, and that makes us the murder capital of the entire nation. It, it does, except I remember... Uh, we actually did hit over a 1,000 some years. I think that uh, in the mid to late 80s, we were consistently uh, eight, 900 a year. No, and, and it was much higher, there's no question. And I remember when I was... When I, when I lived on the South Side, I used to pay more attention. Well, the question of the, the coverage, if you watch the news, any of the local news stations, they're going to lead with a, a homicide or a shooting. And they have... Well, uh, I was taught in journalism school, if it bleeds, it leads. Well, there's plenty of that, and they're <laughs> leading with it. And I, and I think that that's also part of it, is uh, it, there has to be uh, bridges built in the community, uh, the prosecutor's office, the police uh, department, the community members, the, uh, the institutions within uh, neighborhoods, whether they're religious or, or um, social or whatever, there, there needs to be a, a reconciliation in order for us to um, work on this problem that's at the, currently is systemic and, and it's uh, ongoing. Yeah, you know, I want to I wanna, I wanna expand on one of the things you said that I really liked a lot. When you've got a group, and, and I think Twelve five or 13,000 is the actual number of police officers. I could be wrong. Um, but there is no way some of, anytime you get that large group of people, if they're priests, if they're rabbis, if I don't think we saints, should talk about priests. I think we should move on. Because I remember when I began, and we would see a priest at 26 in California, and we would say, oh, it's great. He's here mentoring a member of his flock. And then you'd see a priest, and you'd be, oh, boy, I hope he's not in trouble. And so I, I think that, uh, you know, there's another circumstance. But your point is well taken. We, we need to look at things and try to get some perspective. But more you importantly, know, we need to rebuild trust. Yeah, you don't shake things upside down. The, the trust needs to be rebuilt. But you know what? You don't shake a whole system upside down because you've got a dozen bad eggs out of 12,000. Well, they, they say that the criminal justice system is broken. And as someone who's been in it for 30 years, I don't think it's broken. I think that it's going to be um, like a building, we're going to uh, recondition it and it'll be uh, better than it was. And there has to be some significant changes and you're seeing that. And whether, uh, you know, we've treated drug users as criminals and instead of treatment and alternatives, we've clogged the system with these low level people and we've gotten away from what the criminal justice system is for and that is preserving the safety uh, of the neighborhoods. And we need to focus on violent crime. We need to focus on uh, people that are dangerous in the community. And we need to make sure that when somebody is arrested, their uh, constitutional rights are protected all the way through. Um, and those are things that as those things occur, and as the neighborhood, the people in the neighborhood feel that they're being treated fairly in the court system and with the police, the level of cooperation goes up and the safety level of the neighborhoods goes up because there's communication. And I think that's very important. There, there's nothing that can't be improved, well, other than God. <laughs> but, uh, you know, you know, you just, there's no such thing as continuing to improve upon what you're doing. And I think it's, a, unless you move, there's no such thing also as standing still. So if you think you're standing still, you're going down. Well, I, I think when you look at Cook County and you look at the systems, there's no doubt that Tom Dart's done a wonderful job as the sheriff. There's no dar I'm doubt. I'm a big Tom Dart fan. I wouldn't, I, I, you're a judge. You're not allowed to say this. Oh, I can say he's done a great job. Absolutely. I can say I want him to see him be mayor. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I can say this. He's done a phenomenal job. He, he's, um, he's taken a system. He looked at it, and he's trying within the um, parameters uh, of working with unions and, and working with, with um, people that are protected um, both um, legally and, and with a protocol, a union protocol. And he has been reshaping um, his office and he's been um, attracting good people. He's done a, a number of innovative programs. And I'm hopeful that Kim Fox will be able to do that. Um, and I think that um, that's the type of thing that we need. We need to, you know, move ahead and, and, and recognize that it's 2016 and we need to be smarter and we need to do things better and, we need, and if we do that, 
not only are we going to improve um, people's lives, but we're also going to be more efficient financially, too. I don't think there's any question about it. At this point, Mickey's hands are kind of getting there. So if people want to contact you, it's no longer commit a crime, but it's more like get sued? <laughs> well, you know what? They don't want to contact me directly. So I think that when uh, people walk into a courtroom, they open the door and they look up to see who the judge is, and they either go, oh, no, 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 or oh, thank God. And I don't think mm -hmm. it's oh, thank God because they're going to win or lose, but that they're going to be treated with respect and dignity, and I hope that we're able to do that. Well, you've got a great reputation along those lines. I hope you're ne the next time you're here will be a lot shorter than the, the previous interval. Uh, it was uh, fascinating. Judge Larry Exford, I always enjoy uh, speaking to My you pleasure. and having you on the show. Thank All you. All the best.